Welcome back. Since the day he took office, there have been some critics of the president who have claimed that foreign governments are using the president's businesses to buy his favor and that the president is profiting illegally from the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. Multiple lawsuits have been filed accusing Mr. Trump of profiting off the presidency and violating the Constitution's emoluments clauses, which bars the president from receiving any gift from a foreign government. Today, a federal appeals court put one of those lawsuits filed by Mar the state of Maryland and Washington, D.C.'s attorney general as well in jeopardy, questioning if Maryland and D.C. even have the legal ground to sue the president in the first place. And then the appeals court judges also seem skeptical that President Trump is even illegally profiting from the hotel. With me now are David Farenthold. He's an MSNBC contributor, Washington Post political reporter. His beat is the Trump family business interest. He's been following this emoluments lawsuit closely. And Robert Tsai, he's a constitutional law expert and a professor at American University's Washington College of Law. Welcome to you both. David, let me start with you here. It does seem as if both the state and the district um, are are making an uphill argument. I have to admit, I'm surprised. Why is this such a difficult argument, do you think, for them to well, uh, succeed with? It's so novel. I mean, this thing has been part of the Constitution for 200 plus years, and other presidents had been so leery of even getting close to the line that we haven't really had a legal test. So we're just figuring out how do you argue about emoluments? What are the tests you need to even get into court? And in this case, it seems like the, just, the judges were stopped at the very first step, which was do D.C. and Maryland, the state and the district government, do they, were they even injured by Trump? Can they show that they were injured by the fact that Trump is taking emoluments from foreign governments? If they can't show that, then they can't bring this suit. It seems like that first step, which originally a lower court judge had said, OK, I think you were injured or you might be injured, you can proceed. Now those, these, these judges seem very skeptical of that, which is a, a, pretty, a pretty serious problem for this case. And hey, Robert, I remember the last time I had you on, I think I asked you, doesn't Marriott have more standing, frankly, than either the district? And I say this, it, it is... It is, mer it is a fellow hotel that is being injured by this more so than the, you can't, because Maryland, and I guess Maryland can say they're being injured because they're not collecting hotel taxes in Maryland. But it does seem Marriott would have more standing than the two governments. Is that fair? Well, I, I think it's fair. You've got now at least three different judges who are looking at these cases. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are focusing on, on the theories of injury here, whether anybody can make out uh, the, uh, some sort of factual case that they're being affected by the president's uh, behavior. And you've got one case in the District of Columbia where uh, a judge has allowed the case to go forward on the theory that members of Congress have been injured. Mm -hmm. um, you've got one case in New York where uh, a, a federal a district judge has thrown it out uh, on a variety of grounds. And now you've got this uh, one case where the, the Maryland judge has allowed the case to go forward. Um, but now it looks like the Fourth Circuit is very skeptical. Now, the District of Columbia's and Maryland's theory of injury is, uh, is complicated. Um, for one thing, they argue that uh, they actually operate, for example, some facilities that actually compete with the Trump Hotel. And so this is sort of the twist in their case, gotcha. uh, as well as uh, being able to sort of vindicate some of the interests um, uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the sort of residents in, within their jurisdiction. So David, if they get standing, right, and this is the big deal, getting standing, which is what we're trying to deal with here, leads to discovery, which then leads to what? That's a good question. Uh, discovery seems like the most concrete uh, outcome of this case, right? Remember, we don't know what foreign governments have spent money at Trump's hotel. We know something from press reports, from things we've seen on social media, but we don't really know who those customers are. Uh, and discovery would seek those answers. That would be one really big impact, just that we would actually know who the president's foreign government customers are. The end result, after all that discovery, is a little bit vague. The, the D.C. And, and Maryland have said, well, we want a judge to tell President Trump, stop taking emoluments, <laughs> you know, decree that he must stop doing that, however the judge defines that to be. But they haven't asked, you know, for Trump to be forced to divest or any other sort of more, more far-reaching step. It's just kind of a vague ruling they're looking for. It really seems like discovery is the ballgame. You know, it's interesting here, Robert, what I don't understand is they seem to be focused on, as you note, there's two emoluments clauses, and they seem to be focused on the foreign money one. But here's what, here's where I, I've always thought this is the most troubling for the president. How is he his own landlord? That's a very good question. I mean, he's... Because that's what's happening here, right? Absolutely. Uh, he's tried to distance himself in the sense of not um, being involved in sort of day-to-day -day management of the hotel, but he hasn't taken the steps that other past presidents have in terms of... Right now, of he is the landlord. 
as the president of the United States, right. as the head of the government, because that's a G, that, that is government property. So he is the landlord to his own business. There's another phrase we would often use is conflict of interest, right? <laughs> but uh, there, there, there are a lot of, lot of unprecedented things that, that, that this particular president has done in terms of, of, of thinking about his personal finances. And, um, you know, David's right that, that this is an incredibly novel case, a series of cases where the courts are being asked to interpret this, these, these clauses for the first time. Right. There's some great historical work that's been done by John McHale at uh, Georgetown University that shows us that a lot of people thought that the monuments me, uh, meant any sort of profit, benefit, or advantage that an individual like the president could gain. So that's what the lower district court judge found in this case. Well, it does sound like, David, that the courts, as you said, there's, at the end of the day, it sounds like at it belongs in the Supreme Court, no matter what, to at least interpret, get at least a high court interpretation of the emoluments clause. I, I know there's a couple of individual members of Congress have filed suit on this front. Is that probably the better avenue if this fails? If this fails, if the D.C. and Maryland case fails, then yes, the best vehicle for folks who want to get that discovery is this lawsuit, which by a whole bunch of, a, of congressional Democrats. They basically say... Look, the Constitution says if you're the president, you want to take an emolument, you have to ask Congress's permission. And Trump hasn't given us anything to, to rule on. He hasn't get, asked us for permission right. on anything. So we're being deprived of our role here. That's a different theory of standing, and maybe it'll work. But these cases take so long. If Trump's just a one-term president, we may not even yeah. see this resolved before he's out of the White House. Um, very quickly, Robert, is that the smarter way to go about this, that Congress would have more standing here? Well, I, I think that that's a very attractive um, a, approach. Uh, one of the questions that rises is sort of, you know, uh, is, is there, if they're going to lose, is there a better way to lose than, than uh, one way or another? And I think that the answer might be that if you say that uh, this question is um, not justiciable, at least one thing you would avoid is judges defining the notion of emoluments um, narrowly, because that's what the president's lawyers are inviting judges to do. All right. Robert Sy, David Fahrenholt. I uh, appreciate you both bringing some expertise to this. David, I know you've been on this forever. This smells like this belongs as a congressional investigation first, and then we hit the courts, but we shall see. Anyway, thank you both. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.